Welcome to another video as part of the Thrasher Thursday where we are looking at the various areas of expertise, passion or skill that you can leverage to create an impact or income or influence in waste management. In the previous Thrasher Thursday video, we saw computer science tech and in today's video, we are going to look at finance as an area of expertise, passion or skill for you to do something worthwhile in waste management. I am Praveen Kumar, the creator, educator at Trash the Trash, an online learning social platform for you to create an impact or income in waste management. Let's get into the video. When I say finance, I'm not talking about investment in any waste management company or financing a waste management company. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about something different. How can you leverage your financial skill, your knowledge, your passion to come up with a minimum viable product service solution or recommendation implementation strategy that is going to influence the waste management let's look at few scenarios first if you look at waste management it is considered as a red category not from a pollution control board point of view but rather by the financial institutions by red i am referring to it is a risky industry for a lot of reasons not just because the waste management is controlled by the unorganized sector but the predominant reason being is that it involves capex capital expenditure why do you think we go for financing when the investment is huge and in waste management when do you think the investment is going to be huge when the business model involves machinery and infrastructure and which business model do you think requires such machinery and infrastructure recycling re-engineering and tsdf treatment storage disposal facility which includes incineration and secured landfill i did not say dismantling because dismantling doesn't require a lot of investment but yes of course it requires certain investment but not as huge as recycling or re-engineering the moment capital expenditure is involved it raises a red flag and that too in waste management it is going to be a whole new game itself because there is a lot of skepticism how successful it is going to be the safe comes into picture not a literal safe but the safe terminology which we keep using suitable feasibility viability economics though this is generally what we use in trash the trash but bankers they don't use this word safe as such but in terms of the feasibility viability economics they also consider those aspects not only the banks even lot of other financing institutions equity funding is going to be the best when it comes to waste management but debt funding is a very bad choice if you are a beginner if you have prior experience in waste management then maybe debt funding could be an ideal option but if you are brand new then it's going to be much more challenging because you don't know what kind of problems you might encounter you don't know how the industry is going to work the starting phase is going to be a learning curve for you but what is going to happen you are going to keep on burning cash but you have to eventually service the the loan the emi so if you are going to be a learner or if you are in the learning phase then debt financing is not the option for you so you have to either go for equity funding or it has to be bootstrapped wholly funded by you your friends and family coming to our topic since waste management is a red category if you are a financial expertise then how about financing only the raw material it may sound similar to working capital or cash credit account it's something on the similar line but not exactly the same this is not like a traditional financing but rather in terms of sustainable financing where only the raw material is being financed in this way what is going to happen whoever is going to finance they will get more leeway in terms of sustainability factor in terms of esg in terms of green financing waste is a commodity so because of that reason the raw material whatever they are trying to finance it has a value in it it is not some random piece of shit it has some value it can be either used for repair recycling re-engineering or for any operation whatever it might be when i say waste financing for the raw material not just for the authorized waste management company 
how about even for the informal sector you can do your due diligence the background check whether you will be able to get the money back once you have paid for the raw material where do you think the raw material is going to go to it cannot vanish it cannot disappear it has to go somewhere so everything will be under your control in terms of checks and balances that is something that you have to come up with or if you want to take it one step further how about interest free one month credit like how some of the financing institutions have started so you can experiment it out and then gradually you can add your interest or margins so in that way what is going to happen you are funding for waste so that that can be responsibly further processed by the authorized waste management company not only by them even by the informal sector by that what is going to happen it is going to create more and more transparency in the system the informal sector they will move away from cash based accounting to digital formal accounting in that way there will be more transparency in the system in terms of how much waste what is the valuation for the raw material how much is being transacted so all those information will come in the open so this is just a thought process think about it how can you take it up further next we are going to look at esg environmental social governance it is something of trending it is something on the hot list that everywhere wherever you read wherever you talk this is often coming up esg before we had corporate social responsibility still it is there but then esg is going to be the the new normal how is it different when we talk about csr a certain percentage of the profit is contributed back to the community for a social well being i still remember in one of the csr events i had a very informal discussion at a top level csr head i asked him that you are doing so much for social cause but when it comes to waste management why are you giving the waste to the highest bidder why can't you transfer some of the csr funds to waste management so in that way you are also contributing more towards sustainability factors but i got a usual response that is a different department csr is different but now situation is changing from csr we are moving towards esg where more and more accountability responsibility is going to come in terms of environment in terms of sourcing manufacturing resource consumption waste management it's not going to happen overnight it is going to take time but already esg has sent shock waves across industries in what way it is going to affect their operation their funding and big brands corporations conglomerates they are already taking action for that but in this topic i'm not going to talk about esg at a corporate level but at a lower level at the micro small medium enterprise level generally what happens big brands corporations conglomerates they have when it comes to waste management they are following proper channel for the waste disposal even though they give the waste to the highest bidder but it is still going to someone in the authorized waste management sector what they do with the waste after that that is a completely different story but somehow it is moving towards formal sector but the micro small medium enterprise they don't have such accountability or responsibility they might be on a tight margins but then what they tend to do is to get more money they sell the waste to the scrap dealer the informal sector you can't blame them because they want to get the maximum return on the waste how about a way of helping them creating a win win situation that they can give it to the formal waste management company but for that contribution for the loss for the difference between the formal and the informal sector how about some form of rating mechanism for them for that particular contribution that they are disposing waste to the authorized waste management company some kind of leeway in terms of financing i am not going to ask to include esg or sustainability factors in the financial audit that is not going to happen there is going to be lot of strong objections but we are talking about something which can be done implemented if not immediately but eventually there is a possibility of it happening and if you are going to ask me dream big push for bigger change to push for something bigger there must be more power not only from us by the consumers by the various stakeholders then only any bigger reforms can be implemented for that there is going to be 
more time eventually it will happen but now we are taking baby steps next how about a spot market for waste we have spot market for commodity agri and other products how about for waste in that way what is going to happen it is going to set transparency in terms of pricing everybody can know what is the pricing it's going to be difficult to come up with such a spot market but if you are able to come up with a minimum viable recommendation and implementation how it can be done then what is going to happen that is going to take the waste management to a whole new level now what is happening we know the input raw material the output that is coming out of the waste both are fairly bound by external variables by market dynamics waste is a commodity in a more or less fashion because whatever is going to be the output it is going to be influenced by the global supply and demand geopolitics metal pricing lme pricing so because in a way the output is getting influenced by commodities so because of that reason and because there is a value to the waste we keep saying that waste is a commodity but then there is no such hard and fast rule that these are going to be the pricing for the waste and even the governments are very hesitant to set such a standard pricing so whatever is the pricing again these are set by the various players by the informal sector again it is going to vary on various other factors but somehow if the spot market is going to come then it is going to set the whole transparency and that is going to make the a plain field a fair playground where both the formal and the informal sector can compete at the spot price and how about hedging of waste to offset the risk again waste is a commodity whatever it might be the price today one week from now one month from now the price it might go up or it might go down again depending on various factors so in that way what is going to happen more and more people will get to know about waste how the waste price are getting influenced what are the factors so that in turn might act as a awareness material that okay because of these reason the waste price is getting influenced these are the problems why is it that price so these kind of questions sorts comes into picture let's say there is a stock market there is a stock any stock you take there are if the price goes up question comes why is it going up if it goes down why is it going down so these kind of questions that is going to trigger the thought process of the consumers the various people that in turn might make a change in waste management that is a, these are possibilities i'm just talking about need not be a definite one but these are just possibilities and finally one more advantage which the informal sector has is whatever is the transaction they do it is mostly cash based they don't do anything officially via digital or mobile transaction like uh, paytm google pay they don't use any such thing whatever is the transaction it is purely on cash but whereas the formal waste management company because of the regulations financial regulation they don't deal in cash but rather everything happens through bank or through proper channels what if that is a way to incentivize the customer to give the waste for a coupon this is something which is already happening but not in a traditional way but think about this the coupon might be from a brand who wants to promote sustainability because whatever is going to be the coupon it is specifically for waste management the waste transaction so in that way what is going to happen we might be moving away from cash and more towards these digital coupons in that way it is going to set a transparent record in terms of the transaction how many transaction how much waste that might also make a difference in terms of transaction in terms of transparency again this might take time in terms of the adaptation by the general public but these are possibilities there are various other avenues which you can explore as a financial expert or if you have financial knowledge or skill so in that way you can come up with a minimum viable product service solution or recommendation that in turn can help you create an impact or income or influence in waste management with that i will see you next week with another video as part of the thrasher thursday and i will see you tomorrow with an another video as part of the fun friday